Hello, I'm here today to show you Nano Stream Cloud. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the basics. Don't worry, there are plenty of robust features to explore at a later time. Let's get started. First, we will need to log on. We can use our Bento account that we created in the previous streaming video. Once we are at the Bento dashboard, we can browse to the metrics section on the left side menu. From here, we simply click Log into Metrics. For the username and password, we will use the previously created Bento account. Now that we are on the metrics dashboard, we will look at each area from a high level, but feel free to click around and find the information that is most useful to you on your own time. The first section we are going to look at is the home screen, or dashboard. On the home screen, we can view metrics such as the usage, concurrent viewers, and just in play out statistical data as well as traffic by country. It is good to note that on most of the metrics pages, you can filter by country, tags, true name, and date time. There are also other filters depending on which metrics page you are viewing, but those are outside the scope of this video. For a more detailed breakdown of statistical data, we can head over to the breakdown page, amply named. On the breakdown page, we will see bandwidth usage in gigabytes per IP, stream name, and client. This information is classified as traffic, but there is also a filter for playout information which will show a similar breakdown but based on time and hours. Next, we have the world map. This is one of my favorite metrics because it shows at a high level the areas around the world where the most traffic comes from. When a blip on the map is selected, information like IP, stream name, city, and refer are displayed for precise look into where the traffic is coming from. The H5 Live section has a more detailed explanation of things like the operating system and browser used, the buffering ratio, the player version, etc. That being said, before you can view H5 Live statistical data, you will need to add your metrics key to your player config. This is a bit more technical that I would like to discuss in this video, but know that there is detailed information on how to do this in our developer documentation. Now onto the adaptive bitrate section. This section will help you investigate problems when your stream has transcoding profiles configured. This information includes the profile playtime, viewer count, as well as the profile switch success and failure rate, and number of times the playout switch profiles either up or down in quality. This can be great for getting to the bottom of buffering or slow video playback issues. Whereas the last few sections were about playout, the webcaster section will have information regarding the use of our webcaster technology to stream. If you watched our previous video about streaming using the cloud, you can see just how easy using the webcaster is. However, if you do have issues, the webcaster metrics page will help you investigate what went wrong by offering such data as status or error codes, the average video and audio bit rate the webcaster version, and more. The historical usage page will give a high-level overview of the play out and ingest bandwidth usage over time in gigabytes. Finally, there's the troubleshooting page which is used exactly how it sounds, for general troubleshooting. That being said, this page has information regarding specific play out streams and IPs. Here you can drill down into the specific data center, gather information about stream time and protocol, as well as check for stream inconsistencies using the has drops field. Okay, so that is pretty much it for stream metrics. However, there is also the stream guard, reports, and definitely don't forget the documentation section as it will have a more technical look into things like the metrics API. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more video tutorials in the future. Happy streaming!